From the acclaimed director who brought his films such as Ex Machina, Annihilation, and FX on Hulu's devs, comes a brand new A24 horror film written and directed by Alice Garland by the name of Men. Now, I saw this movie over a week ago, and I still can't get the last 20 minutes out of my head, and that's exactly what we will be discussing in this breakdown. Now, I'm going to attempt to share with you all my thoughts and my theories on what exactly transpired at in this movie. This is my Men in an Explained breakdown, full spoilers ahead. As we open the film with meeting our main character by the name of Harper, we learn via flashbacks what exactly happened between her and her losing her husband. Now we see a fight breaks out between the two in which Harper no longer wants to be in this marriage with James. Now James does not take the news well and he tells Harper not only will he take his own life, but in doing so he will always torment her if she doesn't stay with him and love him. Now Harper does not take the news lightly and they get into a fight in which leads to James punching her in the face. She kicks him out of the apartment. Now we'll be discussing a little bit later. Did James accidentally fall off the apartment building or did he keep his promise and take in his own life? Now after this transpires, we see that Harper takes a mental vacation to the beautiful English countryside in which she comes across a bunch of men who look exactly the same. Now throughout the film, we're seeing Harper interact with these men and all of the interactions are either weird or extremely uncomfortable, which leads to Harper calling her best friend by the name of Riley throughout the film, who wants her friend to be in peace. Riley decides to come down to the countryside, which leads into our insane and very disturbing and very unique third act of the film. Now, I think it's important to establish a couple things very early on, starting off with who was the homeless man and his connections to the green man. Now, in my research of looking up the green man, there are many different interpretations of this figure. Now, the main one I found was it can be interpreted as a symbol of rebirth, representing the cycle of new growth that occurs every spring. Now, the green man is a recurring theme throughout many different stories. Sometimes the figure can be seen in stories such as Robin Hood, Peter Pan, and my personal favorite film of last year, A24, The Green Knight. Now, here's where my theory comes in. Stick with me on this one. I believe the homeless man and the green man Man were two of the same in this narrative. I believe, as we know, the green man is someone that represents rebirth, but also represents the cycle of growth that occurs every spring. Now, it's not a coincidence that Harper happens to be here on this vacation during the springtime. Now, I believe the green man was looking for Mother Earth to give birth, aka Harper being the Mother Earth in this scenario, but she refuses. But before we get into what happens when you refuse the Green Man, let's discuss the men played by Rory Kinnear in this film. I personally believe the film tackles with the idea of the men in this movie, not in the entire world, but the men in this film putting, or should I say, forcing their emotions on Harper's character. For example, we have James, Harper's husband. I will take my own life if you don't love me, forcing her love on him. Let's talk about the vicar. You should allow men to express themselves physically and give them the room to apologize on top of his comments that he clearly is infatuated with her and he blames Harper for the way he feels about her. Let's talk about the teenager in this film who calls her a bitch for not playing the simple game of hide and go seek with her and of course we have the police who dismisses her with her being afraid of the homeless man that they let out of prison early and then we have Jeffrey who out of all accounts seemed to be the nicest out of all the men but even his comments earlier in the film when he mentions the forbidden fruit which I mean within itself this film tackles religion and it even has the story of Adam and Eve involved with this infinite agreement between men and women who are given this task of procreating to keep humanity going. But even the small remarks by Jeffrey regarding the not flushing her tampons during the toilet and even him making this beautiful huge mansion seems so suffocating because of all the rules he's thrown on her. But I think the big question at hand in with regards to these men, why didn't Harper react to seeing them all look exactly the same? Now, I personally think that this was more for the audience point of view to see that these men are physically looking the same, but they obviously have different alterations and variations between them. But ultimately, they felt the same to Harper's character because they were throwing their actions towards her and more importantly, throwing their masculinity on her. Now, Harper, she wasn't having it. She was not going to endure all of their emotions on her. She she wasn't going to be forced to love her husband. She wasn't going to take the remarks from the vicar. And now this is what leads into the madness of the most disturbing element of this film, 
the rebirth. Now, circling back to the green man and Harper's rejection to giving birth, in this case being Mother Earth, he decides to give birth to the same versions of himself, which to me symbolizes the idea that if men can't have women to procreate, they're just going to recreate themselves over and over and over again without the help of a woman. Now, to me, this ultimately ties back to the idea that her husband, who cursed her earlier in the film, mixed in with his folklore of the green man, arrives for only Harper to yet again deny this burden at the end of the film. Now, as we wrap up the film, we see that her best friend Riley finally arrives, seeing that she is pregnant, and this puts a smile on Harper's face, because in my opinion, this was her thing of being happy to see that the world is in good standing, because women are ultimately needed to balance the world and not be flooded with the masculinity of these men. So one more topic I want to tackle before wrapping up this breakdown. I asked the question, do I believe James accidentally fell off the apartment building or did he take his own life? I do think that he just couldn't live with the idea that Harper wouldn't love him and in return he took his life and we see that he kept his promise in tormenting her but she did not take on that burden. So a very interesting film. I did do a non-spoiler review kind of giving you more of my analytical thoughts and I gave you the score of the film so you can check out that video to get more of my thoughts on the movie but overall I think a lot of people will be talking about the third act and hey this is my attempt to try to give you all my thoughts on the green man and what exactly happened in the third act of this film so if you enjoyed this breakdown make sure you all are giving this video a thumbs up but also sharing your thoughts your opinions your pros your cons what deeper meanings did you all take away from the film what were some things that really stood out to you let's have those discussions in the comments below if you stuck around to the point of the video, I can't thank you enough. Before you all leave, as you can see on the screen now, come and join the community. Check out my non-spoiler review for this film. Check out my most recent video, and we'll catch you all on the next breakdown. Uh -huh.